Back here in Columbus, the first of two semifinal games here for field hockey. The winners advance to championship Sunday and a chance to win that Big Ten tournament trophy. Penn State, of course, the defending tournament champs. They've won six of those, the most in Big Ten history. There's your weather, 40 degree temps. Mostly sunny here for today, which is good, although you can play field hockey in the rain, right, Kara Lentz? It almost makes it better with the turf. Does it really? Yeah. Okay. You look at Iowa and Penn State, these two teams met the last time, October 25th, a 2-1 to one victory there for the Nittany Lions, and Penn State had to come from behind to win that one, scored two second-half goals within four minutes of each other and extended their match win streak to 11 at that point. And the last meeting came on that October 25th when the freshman there, Stephanie Norlander, who voted freshman of the year, got the Hawkeyes on the board first. And then here came the Nittany Lions. That was Jenna Christmer tying it up at one. And there is your game winner score, Brittany Griswack, who scored off of the corner to make it two to one. I know she is back there in the backfield, though, for Penn State. But fourth in shots there in the Big Ten. She has an offensive presence, certainly, on those attacking corners there for the Nittany Lions. It's a threat that you have to look at when you're scouting their corner offensive unit. Your lineups here this afternoon. Starting with the Nittany Lions, Kylie Licata had big shoes to fill this year, taking the place of the graduating Ayla Hallis. She has a very veteran lineup in the field. Few underclassmen play for Penn State and a very junior and senior laden lineup there for Penn State. I was lineup. Kelsey Boyce took the place of Murdy McGraw who graduated. She has the senior number 18, Carly Johansson in the backfield to make her job easier. KJ named second team all Big Ten. Some of those honors coming out here this week. We'll get into that a little bit here later in this game. But here we go. The first semifinal here from Columbus, Ohio. Two nationally ranked teams between Iowa and Penn State. And the Nittany Lions control on the outset. Taylor Harold on the right side. So quick there for Penn State. Already drawing the early whistle there for the Nittany Lions. Lauren Purvis there, number 10. The series history, Penn State won at Iowa, as we mentioned, as we showed you. But Iowa leads the all-time series there, even though Penn State has won the last five when these two teams meet. What kind of styles of play will we see here this afternoon? Well, Iowa had great success last time they played against Penn State with trying to thread the needle up to their forward line and their midfield line. Already Penn State with the press attack and score. Not even a minute into the game, Nittany Lions up one nothing. Jenna Krishmer, right place, right time, right off the press. And went right along with that, Penn State decided to really press the backfield extremely hard and very aggressive on that play. Krishmer having a tremendous success against this Iowa team, she got it started the last time these two teams faced, and that is just a little lack in decision-making coming from Iowa's backfield. I mentioned Jenna Christmer had one of the two goals against Iowa October 25th. Now her seventh goal here of the season. And I think it's important that Penn State scores early. Iowa with a little bit of a look there, and Penn State trying to clear. Marika Strivos just inside the attacking 25. As Iowa tries to work it around, a 16-yard hit coming up. So this is excellent press coming from Penn State. You see Chrismer taking away that transfer coming across. If you are in the backfield and you see the attackers and forwards coming at you, you don't want to wind up and try to hit the ball out. You need to keep the ball on your stick, hold, hold possession, and carry it out of the circle. When you bring your stick up like that, you are creating a large opportunity for the opposing team to come in and take that ball, and that's exactly what happened. How do you rate Penn State's press? Well, on that, it was pretty aggressive. They were had three attackers on the inside of the circle, but I think it's important that they establish how they're going to press in the early get-goings of the game. When Iowa gets momentum, when they carry the ball out of the backfield, when they have good streaming passes, that's when they have success. Again, Penn State pressing. 
forcing the issue. Char Moret, Penn State's head coach, been coaching for about 30 years in her 26th season in State College. She has led the Nittany Lions to back-to-back -back regular season titles, trying to get them back-to-back -back tournament titles here this weekend. shot the first quality look there for Penn State the Nittany Lions take advantage Iowa has yet to oh early has yet to generate a, a real solid offensive chance here and it's easy to kind of start the game a little on your heels if you're Iowa they battled Michigan yesterday a one goal game and that really came down to an absolute dogfight on the field not many shots corners anything else in between so that goes to show that it was an extremely physical match Tracy Grisbaum her team held Penn State scoreless till the final 20 minutes of that game back on October 25th, said that, that our team played to win today, and she is certainly glad to get another second chance and a second look here at this Penn State team. Nittany Lion team were and only lost one time here in the Big Ten Conference season, and that came in the finale, the regular season finale, as we had mentioned, against Michigan, where Gebhardt trying to dribble into the circle, draws the whistle. And our first corner chance coming up here for Penn State. Well, you're going to be seeing a lot from this, uh, from Penn State of these corner situation. They're extremely successful in drawing the corners. They average just under 10 a game. Penalty corner taken by number 13, Whitney Reddick for the Nittany Lions. Penn State and Northwestern kind of head to head there. There you see the numbers. Penn State averaging, as you mentioned, just under 10 per game, and we'll go short side there. Brittany Griswack, the option pass to Laura Gebhardt, and Iowa stands strong. That was Carly Johansson for Iowa, part of the defensive corner unit. Take another look. Well, this is a good read by Johansson. Notice to the right part of your screen, stepping up there, applying pressure, and because the ball did hit her body and her legs, Penn this State. will be another penalty corner for Penn State. So the Nittany Lions lining up very similarly. This time they go up top, the stick pass there to Brittany Griswack who will swing away and Natalie Cafone there with the deflection. It's easy to talk about Cafone's ability on the forward line, but where she's also effective is at the fly position when she's coming out from the baseline and getting out to the top of the circle as quickly as possible. Griswack trying to wind up and Cafone right there. How often do you see a player who is so offensively successful be defensively successful as well? It's the fastest player on the team, and usually one of the faster people on your team is going to be playing on that forward line. Natalie Cafone, second in points and in goals in the Big Ten, and oh so important on that defensive corner unit there for Iowa. Just a sophomore for the Hawkeyes. There is Natalie Cafone on a New Jersey. She had the assist to Stephanie Norlander against Michigan to get Iowa to this point. That was the only goal scored in that quarterfinal game. And if you look at her stats, 19 goals and 19 games played. So if you break it down, she's averaging about one goal per game. That shows to me some consistency that she's had throughout the season. And she's playing extremely well with Stephanie Norlander, who has had a lot of success to start the season, and now they're bouncing well off of each other. Into the corner, and a whistle drawn. Penn State with a free hit. Quick restart. Laura Gebhardt, so good at dribbling, so good with her stick work. We'll start from the hash marks there and taken right away. And this is going to be an interesting matchup as this game progresses. Is Danny Hemion and Laura Gebhardt, both of those players, very good individual skill, also very good tackling skills. So watch that face up in the center of the midfield.
This is not the only championship going on here on the Big Ten Network. Semi-final coverage of the Women's Soccer Championships from the University of Illinois coming up next on BTN. And BTN to go, you start with Penn State and Iowa. That sounds familiar, huh? That sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> The first semifinal game here for field hockey, and then following up with some soccer and some men's basketball. And if you want to watch the second semifinal game here for field hockey, it'll be shown on tape delay here tonight at 11.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Look at, look at Laura Gebhardt with the free hit. And also with a different way of taking the free hit. She didn't self-start it and put it into play. She actually wound up, choked her hands up on her stick and was looking for that long pass to the forward line. So as a defender, if you are guarding or marking up against Laura Gebhardt, you have to be cautious of how she's taking her free hits. And the fact that she varies it up, that makes it tricky to defend. What's the first thing you try and take away from a Laura Gebhardt? I think is time with the ball. And where that becomes tricky is her off-ball movement. And she's putting herself in a good situation and space on the field to be productive with it. There is Gebhardt number five just battling. There is again that matchup you were talking about between Danny Hemian and Laura Gebhardt. This is the first of two semifinals. This is how we got here. The one upset, the number seven seed Ohio State beating the number two seed Northwestern yesterday. Again, that is our second semifinal game shown on tape delay here at 11.30. Penn State scoring in the first minute of play. Jenna Chrismer. Getting the unassisted goal on that. That's a great outlet pass. Griswack coming out of the backfield, getting it up to her left midfielder, changing the point of attack. Getting it up to Taylor Harold, voted second team all Big Ten. In fact, Penn State had six honorees, the most out of any Big Ten team here this season. Of course, we had mentioned Brittany Griswack, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Back to back years, she has gotten that. And also Taylor Harold, the last time that these two teams faced in the tournament was of the semifinals last year at Iowa. And Taylor Harold coming up with two goals in that game. A couple of deflection goals with uh, Kelsey Amy setting her up. Of course, Amy, one of the graduating stars here for Penn State. And really, the Nittany Lions haven't missed much of a beat, missing Kelsey Amy and Ayla Hallis. They have plenty of, of returners coming back. There is Taylor Harold, 11 goals and 26 points here this season. Leads the way here for this team. And I think without the speed and skill of Kelsey Amy on the front line, that's enabled Penn State's midfield and other forwards to be more involved with attack. And their defense as well, as we've seen with Griswack, Abby Furman, and some players on the outside. They take away Gebhardt. It's the whistle and an Iowa free hit coming up. 10 and 0 when scoring first. That is exactly the situation here for Penn State. Charmorette and company good at handling leads. Unbeaten so far this year. Ashton Klingler bringing it down the left side there for Penn State. And Iowa's defense doing a good job of Iowa stepping up outside of the circle to Kelsey make that tackle. Harris for number 12, Kelsey Mitchell. 23 minutes to play here in the first half. And 
And Ashton Klingler doing a great job with executing on the outside. And look at her ability to just make those little pulls to the left. And that is a di that's difficult to do because a defender, your strongest side when you're tackling is your forehand. So usually you want to pull the opposite way if you're an attacker. But Klingler doing a great job with little dukes on the outside. The long outlet pass there to Cafone who takes the quick shot. Now we've seen Iowa lift the outlet pass up a couple of times here this afternoon, trying to find the phone up top. And just look how quick she is with the ball. Her feet continue to move when she has possession of the ball. And that's where she really eliminates her defenders. And the last time that she faced this Iowa defense, she was able to really break down their defense which is not an easy thing to do, but that was the first shot there for Iowa for this game, coming from Natalie Cafone. When we talked to Tracy Grisbaum when they were taking on Penn State the first time, she said that that's what we would love to do, is just get Natalie Cafone up there in the front field and kind of feed her and let her go. And they had great success with that. BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live events and BTN original programming. All you have to do is go to btntogo.com. Laura Gebhardt again with his stick handling, trying to dribble it into the circle. And Iowa very cautious and aware when Penn State is executing and penetrating inside that offensive end. They have about two to three defenders to slow down time and take away space of Penn State's attackers. Laura Gebhardt, just the one goal, but 14 points off of the 12 assists. Tied for first there in the Big Ten for assists. An instrumental role on the offensive corners. Stick stopping at the top of the circle. That's where she's getting her assists from. And it's pretty easy to have that be a routine thing, but the fact that Penn State is having success off of that whole unit is huge. Those little minor details stopping the ball and being able to put it into play on a consistent basis, enable that player to notch those assists. Alongside Kara Lentz, I'm Lisa Bynes, and here from Columbus, Ohio, the first semifinal game, the first of two, here from Buckeye Varsity Field. Before this weekend is done, we will have a Big Ten Tournament champion. Of course, the regular season ended with Penn State being co-champs there with Northwestern after losing that regular season finale to Michigan. Wildcats losing in the quarterfinals, Michigan losing in the quarterfinals. We have that Michigan Iowa State, Ohio State matchup 12, coming up Kelsey after Mitchell this one. For number seven, Sophie Plasteris. Three Penn State players. And look how high Laura Gebhardt is on this press. She plays a high midfield position. Because of her Isabella ability to Lee dictate Cardella. the press, to and put pressure on the opposing Marcus defense, Marcus. and once she gets up with it, she's finding a pass immediately and eliminating and the opposing ten. team. Audrey Coleman getting whistled, and so Penn State with the free hit, looking for the long outlet pass seven, that was Grisback. For number eight, Stephanie Norlander. Looking up to Amanda Denunzio there for Penn State. We see Ashton Klingler, number three there, trying to take away the transfer pass for Penn State. Well, she's also doing a great job with applying pressure into Nikki Schultheis in the backfield once she receives it. And Iowa having some difficulty with breaking the ball out of their backfield. This is where the throw comes in and could be very handy for Iowa's defense, getting a lift up to the midfield. We have seen that sort of attack there, trying to, trying to get it up to Natalie Cafone and, and Tracy Grisbaum trying to do all they can to get it up to their leading score as 46 points for them so far this season. This is Brittany Griswack. Going all the way there from the backfield and running into two Hawkeye players back the other way on the transition. There is Cafone. She's going to continue to carry her body and her feet moving. And look about three Penn State defenders are collapsing on Cafone. And that is a great call 
And that is a great play by Cafone coming inside the circle, recognizing where the space is behind her. Look at this, about three Penn State defenders. She goes right through that double team. And if you're Penn State, you have to step up to her and apply some type of touch, tackle, or physical play. And this is exactly why Cafone's able to come up with a good situation right there. That transition opportunity coming from the opposite, like really the top of the circle on the, on the defensive end there for Iowa and taking it away from Brittany Griswack and off they went. About 17 and a half minutes to play. This will be the first corner opportunity here for Iowa and Penn State has already gotten a couple. Ironically, that goal for Penn State did not come off, come off a corner opportunity. Really off of its press there in the first minute of play. You see Aubrey Coleman there in the stick stop position at the top of the circle. Plenty of firearms there. That's Denny Hemion. We'll take a chance up and over the cage. A long hit coming up here for Iowa. 17 minutes to play. And Iowa trying to keep it in its attacking 25. And Penn State got out of that jam. Well, I think they were set defensively a lot earlier than the free hit was actually happening. They look composed in the backfield, and I, I, it looks as though they're about two to three seconds ahead of Iowa. And again, that may have to do with the fact that they did not play in the quarterfinals on Thursday. This Iowa team did play early in the quarterfinal game on Thursday. What is the rest and recovery that you have to do? Get your legs up, get hydrated. <laughs> Penn State striking first here in the first semifinal off of the press. Jenna Christmer trickling it home there for the Nittany Lions. One nothing Penn State. That's that second semifinal game will be on tape delay 1130 Eastern Michigan State in Ohio State. You can check that out on Big Ten Network 1130 Eastern. Gebhardt with the jab tackle, and Denunzio working the right side out to Gebhardt, who's in front of the net looking to create, and again, another, another collision there with Danny Hemion. The matchup you said to keep an eye on. And look at the 2v1 situation that Penn State creates. As soon as Laura Gebhardt comes up with the ball, she dishes it out to Denunzio. Then she gets herself in a good situation to have that one pass, that give and go. And Penn State is very effective in playing the small game, carrying in numbers and having those passing options. That was a great example of what Penn State can do. Is that something that Char Moret has always done? It's the characteristic of Penn State field hockey and that's sometimes the most difficult thing to disrupt when they have momentum and composure in a game. Ashton Klingler up against three Hawkeye players. Penn State now with its third corner opportunity. Again, Whitney Reddick, number 13, there will insert. There you see the corner differential between the two teams. And Brittany Griswack, number 11, is going to be one of the main strikers at the left part of your screen on that battery. So they go up top, and there is Griswack, and the save there from Boyce. And when, if you are a corner defensive unit such as Iowa, going up against Penn State, you have to be aware of number 11. This time, she's going to be striking or sweeping from the top. If she's situated at the L1 position toward the left of that offensive battery, them, you can make sure that it's either going to be a pass into her or it's going to be an option pass to the left. Be aware of number 11 if you're Iowa. Seven game winning goals tied for first in the Big Ten. That one short side. That was Taylor Harold with the swipe. Griswack out to Gephardt who tries to lift it. Boyce is there and a foul. A foul there with Ashton Klingler trying to create there in front of the cage. Take another look. And 
Penn State just trying to keep the play alive. Gebhardt trying to get a good lift on it. Kelsey Boyce, though, putting a good save on. Kelsey Boyce, third in the Big Ten in goals against average. Third in the Big Ten in save percentage. Back the other way, though. Laura Gebhardt again trying to create. Kelsey Boyce, a couple of save opportunities there for the red shirt senior. Right into the back and count it. The one-timer from Taylor Harold. Penn State up to nothing. Well, I wonder if Nittany Lions actually travel in a pack when they're in the wilderness because Penn State seems to do that pretty well when they're on the field, is having numbers around the ball. Look at this. Again, that 2v type of one situation where they have a lot of attacking numbers inside the circle, but also in the right position at the right time. Taylor Harold staying calm and cool and collected when you're inside the circle, keeping her body facing forward, and that's a great deflection right into the top corner. Harold with her 12th goal here this season. Ashton Klingler with her fourth assist. Taylor Harold just really loves playing against Iowa because she's had great success every time she faces that team. Well, that goal looked like a couple of the goals that you had referenced in the semifinal last year. Scoring for Penn State, number eight, Taylor Harold. Here again the with Ashton Klingler. Three, Ashton Klingler. <laughs> And if you're Iowa's defense, if you have a situation like this, you basically have to decide when you're going to commit. Beats Carly Johansson and tries to find the inside, and Taylor Harold is right there in the right position. What you don't see also is Denunzio a little off screen off that post, but I, uh, excuse me, Penn State working well and being in great passing lanes, and this give, the give and goes, or deflections. I showed you the graphic earlier. Penn State 10 and 0 this season when scoring first. So far adding there an insurance goal for the junior Taylor Harold. Give the assist there to Whitney Reddick, her ninth of the season. There's Klingler working that left side. Klingler, one of those seniors. Penn State has a very veteran group that they like to start up top. Harold is a junior, Chrismer is a junior, Klingler is a senior. You have Reddig and Furman and Purvis in the midfield, all seniors. Gebhardt is a junior. So you talk about what they had lost last year in an Ayla Hallis and a Kelsey Amy, but they had plenty of key players coming back for this season. I mean, and also Iowa you take a look at some of their number defensive two. players. Uh, Griswack uh, has started every single game 17. of her career. So yeah, even yeah, though Pearson. you graduate some production on the defensive end in Ayla Hallis and on the offensive end, you still have a lot of these players that have been playing together for two to three years. And Taylor Harold was used to playing on the forward line with Kelsey Amy, so she knows exactly how to have some success. Harold had two goals in the game winning goal in the shootout against Michigan State earlier this season. That is a great composure by Stephanie Norlander to come up with that corner situation. Good possession over the ball. Take a look back to how we got to this place in the beginning of the game, Penn State very aggressive on the press, and Jenna Krishmer getting the goal to put Penn State up 1-0. Taylor Harold, right place, right time, great deflection, top corner. Penn State now out to a 2-0 lead. Iowa now with a corner chance. Take a look at Charmorette, her team, pacing the way here in this first semifinal game. Hawkeyes getting another corner look. Nikki Schulteis will insert. She goes up top in the save there from Kylie Licata. <laughs> so 
So Iowa coming up empty-handed once again. Well, Brittany Griswack actually goes down on her knees when she's playing that post position right inside the net. That was a great drag coming from Iowa at the top. Other than the Cafone shot on the right side there of the cage, Iowa's best offensive looks have come on corner opportunities. Is there something that they can do more to generate more non-corner offensive looks? Well, I think Iowa's had great success throughout this whole season with playing from the field. That's where Natalie Cafone is effective. I think it's just a matter of breaking through Penn State's midfield and defense. Once they're inside the circle, it's exciting to watch the Iowa attackers perform. Last year, Iowa earned an at-large bid to the NCAAs. That was the second straight year they had done that. First back-to-back -back bids for the first time since 2007-2008. And speaking of those 07-08 teams, the last time that Iowa won the Big Ten tournament, it was their third consecutive between 2006, 7, and 8, and that was a team that really had a strong chance of making it far in the NCAA tournament. They made it to the semifinals on the national stage in 2008. And a lot of those players still involved with the program. Megan Bemis defer comes back as a volunteer assistant. Jess Barnett is competing with the Canadian national team. That's a tongue twister of a name, isn't it? Jess Bar Bemis defer? <laughs> Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Freshman of the Year. Again, the long outlet pass is clearing it out of harm's way. Penn State take the side in. Katie Brenneman, number 14, sending it up there to Griswack. And Natalie Cafone, really aggressive on that press. Iowa doesn't typically have a lot of numbers around the press against Penn State's defense or midfield. But Cafone doing a lot of that running in between that center back and the sidelines, applying pressure. Is Carly Johansson from Jesse Silver. Six minutes left to play here in this first half. Penn State leading 2 0 and also an 8 2 shot advantage here this afternoon. Isabella Alicia Dello trying to control that there for Iowa. Will be side in there for Iowa. Of course, this is a week of championships, and it's also a week of individual honors. A player of the year and offensive player of the year, Rachel Mack, Brittany Griswack, defensive player of the year, and Norlander, the freshman, Tracy Fuchs, getting Northwestern to its first Big Ten championship since 1994. I actually remember that. Were you in school? I was in school during that time. <laughs> Northwestern, of course, eliminated, upset by the number seven seed yesterday. Again, Penn State with another look and the kick save from Boyce. Penn State continuing to press, and this was another look that they had. Also, Penn State with those passes that they're connecting with, they're beating about two or three Iowa defenders and then placing anything they can on, can on that. Denunzio having great success with executing from that right sideline. Amanda Denunzio getting some quality playing time here for Penn State here this afternoon. And the takeaway, and again, here comes the Nittany Lions. A quick restart, Laura Gebhardt trying to dribble it in. She's got some space, trying to go left side, and it's wide. And that's the exact same situation that Penn State was able to come up with their first goal to start the beginning of the first half. Gebhardt so crafty and quick when she possesses the ball, understands the space around her. Penn State's 10th shot there of the half to Iowa's two this afternoon. 
Under four minutes to go here in the first half. And this is a team that averages about 18 shots per game, and that's over the full 70 minutes, and already they're almost reaching that number only in the first half. Iowa is a team that ranks first in goals scored here in the Big Ten Conference. What? Although only fourth in shots here in the conference, Iowa scores more times than anyone else out of the six other teams here in the Big Ten. Iowa's defensive corner unit, what do you see, Kara? Well, you see Natalie Cafone right there at the top, and also the outside trails are reading this really well. Penn State isn't really taking direct shots. You see Natalie Cafone again, extremely effective. And I think as a whole, the trails and the fly are reading each other extremely well. Penn State doesn't take an initial shot or direct shot as we've seen throughout the first half thus far. So it's important that they are aware of the option passes to the outside. Again, Penn, Penn State generates almost 10 corner opportunities, but both of these goals here this afternoon have not come off of corner chances. Green card issued to Iowa. A green card has been issued here to the Hawkeyes. And a Penn State corner chance again coming up here. Penalty corner taken by number 13, Whitney Reddick. Whitney Reddick will line. insert. Marika Stribos issued the green card there for Iowa. Up top there, and Brittany Griswack. And how about the diving save there from Boyce? And the second opportunity there is wide. Well, finally, I love to see Griswack try to get a drag flick off, and she was trying to find the inside of that left post. Boyce having great composure in the net. Four shutouts here this season. Look at the shot differential. Boyce has certainly been tested here early in this first half. So with the green card opportunity, Iowa playing down a player. Marika Stribos will have to sit out two minutes with the green card penalty. And you want to limit the amount of defenders or midfielders that have a possibility of getting carded this game and having to sit out for that time because Penn State is having success with breaking down Iowa's defense when they're breaking out. So the more numbers that you have on the field, and especially that core, such as Stribos, Hemion, Johansson, and Schultheis, you want to have those players involved in the game. 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Iowa Penn State getting goals from Christmer and Harold. That's where we sit at 2 nothing. Stephanie Norlander there working on the left side. The freshman and the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, as you saw on that graphic. 18 points and nine goals here in her rookie campaign. Final few seconds here of the first half. We'll end with a 2-0 Penn State advantage. The Nittany Lions didn't waste any time getting on the board, scoring in the first minute of play thanks to Jenna Christmer and then Taylor Harold adding an insurance goal, and that is where we stand. 35 more minutes to play to a championship Sunday spot. Iowa trails here 2-0 going into the second half. The good news for the Hawkeyes, they have outscored opponents in the second half 37-12. Look at Natalie Cafone, one of the top scorers there for Iowa. So happy you could join us here on this Friday morning of Field Hockey Friday. Alongside Kara Lentz, I'm Lisa Byington. You see our Twitter handles up there. Kara, I know, is 
very good at tweeting and commercial breaks and <laughs> responding to the numbers of fans that want her field hockey answers throughout the day. The takeaway there from Taylor Harold of Penn State, and she's off and running. Taylor Harold scoring that second goal there for Penn State here this afternoon, her 12th goal here of this season, her 28th point of the year. A long hit coming up here for Penn State. That one trickling into the circle. A whistle and a free hit. We well, see Laura Gebhardt push up real high from the midfield. Is that something that she has done her whole career? I think it's a, a position and a role that she has played into. If you have players behind her, such as Abby Furman and Brittany Griswack, who are able to push up as well, then you can have that high midfielder be in that position. She's just a smart player. She provides good defensive skill and offensive skill. And that's effective to have on a more attacking forward or midfield. First team all Big Ten. Honoree, we had mentioned that she leads the Big Ten in assists, tied for the Big Ten in assists. A lot of scoring punch here on this Penn State team. You saw Ashton Klingler with the game winning goals that she has attained here this season. Also a second team all Big Ten honoree. We had mentioned six Penn State players had been honored here in the postseason awards. Kara, you had talked about in the half that you felt like Penn State had fresh legs. How does Iowa quickly recover here to generate something in the second half? I think you need to take care of the ball when you have the ball. Iowa's having some difficulty with breaking in out of their defensive end. I think they need to have some better passing combos. And also, Penn State's doing a great job with eliminating the ability for Iowa to connect with the forwards, such as Stephanie Norlander and such as Natalie Caffone. Abby Furman issued the green card there for Penn State. So Penn State will be down a player and Furman will have to sit out for two minutes. How about Ashton Klingler down the left side there taking on two Hawkeye defenders. I think that was a great example perhaps of some of the fatigue that Iowa has on their defense. They had two defenders committing to Ashton Klingler on the side, running with her but not applying a jab tackle or a block tackle. Klingler down the end line. We've seen Reddick and Klingler take it to the end line there on the left side and effectively dump it into the middle. Ashton Klingler so quick, so fast. Can make that move end line and just go, go, go. She's very strong on her reverse side and that's the reason that she's playing that left forward position. Aubrey Coleman looking to outlet it. Out to Natalie Caffone there for Iowa. We well, see number eight for Iowa up top there for Stephanie Norlander as we take a look there at Natalie Caffone. Norlander, one of the, the freshmen, of course, she had the lone goal against Michigan in the quarterfinals. We have not said her name much here this afternoon. And this was a player that really came along in the beginning part of the season. And the di most difficult thing about that as a freshman, you're not used to playing such a long season. Klingler taking it right away, and she's all alone. It's one on Kelsey Boyce, and Boyce with the diving stop and save. Well, Klingler prefers to go to her reverse, and again, Penn State coming up with the ball by pressuring Iowa's defense. She prefers to go to her reverse, so she was looking to get the ball towards outside the body. She took time with that. That allowed Boyce to come out to make a move and apply a great save. Caffone a little bit in the open field. We haven't seen Iowa get many opportunities like this, many transition opportunities. Out to the right side, the service into the circle. Griswack handling and clearing. Iowa trying to punch it right back in. And Penn State's defense has been absolutely phenomenal this season. Seven shutouts, and they went on a streak there for 12 straight wins where their defense was the one thing that popped out. Whitney Reddick, you see there, the active career national leader in assists, 44 assists for her entire career. No active player in the country has more. Okay. 
Miller trying to intercept. Iowa with no shots here in the last 15 minutes, looking to end that streak. The deflection. Klingler again. And she is speedy enough, she can take it herself down the left side. But Carly Johansson, they call her KJ, able to track back and catch up with the speedy Klingler. As Whitney Reddick will take the free hit. Here comes the speedy Cafone back the other way here for Iowa. She has a couple of support players and Cafone dribbling it right into the circle. And look how quickly Lauren Gebhardt is able to get back and in the defensive circle. They have good numbers inside. They have Brittany Grisbeck who has a great stick with. This was a play here from earlier, Iowa on the attack. And as I was, that's a great steal by Ashlyn Klingler. And also recognizing that Iowa was trying to backtrack a little bit and swing the ball around to create numbers. If you're Penn State's defense and midfield, that's a situation where they're very much on their heels. So what do you do in that? You get a pass ahead and you apply pressure, just as they did. And Klingler taking the ball for about 60 yards up the field with relative ease. There you see the penalty corner differential between the two teams. Iowa getting its third corner opportunity here. Going up top, it was Hemion with the chance. Lakata again with the back-to-back -back saves. Schulteis was there and so was Lakata, and Lakata winning that battle. It's rare that Iowa's gonna get one of these opportunities. It almost was like a mistrap a little bit by Carly Johansson at the top trying to get that drag. The important thing with the drag is that you stay low throughout the whole time. If you're tired, and you're not gonna be able to continue that momentum and weight transfer for the drag, you're not gonna get a good shot off. Lakata has not had to be tested that often here this afternoon, but she comes up big time there on that opportunity. Or this season, really. I mean, this is a, a defense that definitely limits the amount of shots that Lakata face. Charmorette said that she's very quick and aggressive, and certainly one of the anchors there of a very formidable defensive Unit there for Penn State. Katie Andrews, Brittany Griswack, Katie Brenneman, the starters there in the backfield for the Nittany Lions. In fact, both of these teams very defensive minded. The swing and the miss, they're in the circle. And she knew that was a missed opportunity there for Taylor Harrell. Look at the Big Ten leaders. Goals against average. We're seeing two of the top teams here in the Big Ten, led by their goalkeepers, Kelsey Boyce and Kylie Licata. What defines Iowa defense? We've talked about Penn State defense. What defines the Hawkeye well, defense? You know, this is a team that I think has had a significant testing uh, when it comes to their defense, but also the role players that they have in the backfield in regards to experience. A lot of those players, Schultheis, uh, Strybos, and Johansson have been playing together as that defensive core for quite some time. Familiarity and communication are, are things with Iowa's defense. You talked about the senior leadership, the junior leadership for Penn State, but Tracy Grisbaum and company have those veteran leaders there. Carly Johansson, as you mentioned, a senior. Schulteis is a senior. Danielle Pearson is a redshirt junior. How about this pass into the circle? And that's finding a lot of space inside that circle. Long outlet pass. Iowa getting out of harm's way. There's a look at the Big Ten freshman of the year, Stephanie Vorland Norlander. We live in a social media world. You can contact us on Twitter, at Big Ten Network, or at Kara Lentz, or at Lisa Byington. We'll be with you here all day long. Championship Friday. Getting to the championship Sunday. Two semifinal games here from Columbus, Ohio. Again, the second semifinal game between Ohio State and Michigan State will be on tape delay, 11.30 Eastern. Kelsey Mitchell was in a great spot right there, directly in front of the net, looking for a quick deflection. 
And I think Iowa's having some success with just getting that ball inside the circle and looking for things to happen. And sometimes those freak goals come from those situations. It may not be the cleanest play. Alongside the former Michigan captain, Carol Lentz, I'm Lisa Byington, and look at the speed there from Taylor Harold going one on two. You know, Kelsey Amy may have graduated, but there is an, a lot of similarity between Taylor Harold and Kelsey Amy. And here's another look. Timer, Kara Lentz. And she breaks that double team right there. And just the foot speed, she's going to beat you in about a two-yard square. 24 minutes to play. Taylor Harold, one of the goal scorers here this afternoon. Talk about speed. Here is Natalie Caffone dribbling her way into the circle. Score it. Caffone gets Iowa on the board. And this is exactly what Natalie Caffone does. She scores from the field to play during live action. This is a player that will continue to move the ball forward and does not stop her speed or fluctuate it. So she's going to be going a million miles an hour the whole time when she possesses the ball. Look how much time and space she has. She's just going to beat Abby Furman on the inside, gets her right in front. And if you're Katie Anders, Penn State's defender number 14, you don't step up to that ball. That ball is for your goalkeeper because you're going to be leaving another forward open in the circle. And Natalie Caffone getting things started for the Hawkeyes and it's in a time when they really need it. And they've been inside their offensive end. Caffone now second in points and goals here in the Big Ten and for good reason. Her 20th goal, 48th point here this season. Cuts the lead here to one. Two to one was the final, the last time these two teams met, October 25th. Penn State coming out victorious in that one and actually won a share of the Big Ten title in that game. How about another corner opportunity coming up? And here's another look, Caffone creating all of herself, unassisted there for her 20th goal this year. And also when she gets that ball out in front of her, she's not touching it up. And what I mean by that is adding an extra touch or two touches to get the ball in a good position. Her body is adjusting on the move before she strikes it. She's back swinging before she even approaches the ball. So by the time she gets there, she can place a good strike on it. A little winded. I mean, she's been at both sides of the field and having that fly position on the corner defense. Yeah, she is in that defensive corner unit there for Iowa. And another look here for Penn State. They've had a couple of these up top there to Brittany Griswack. The option pass there to Laura Gebhardt up and over the cage. And again, Caffone's corner defense. What she does a good job here, first of all, watch number nine, breaking down her steps, staying in front of the play, and reaching for the ball. That's a great read by Caffone. A foul there in the circle and a free hit for Iowa. Take another look. Here comes Caffone. And breaking down your steps in a small amount of area is probably one of the most difficult things to do on that defense. Klingler almost with the takeaway, the dangerous play there for Iowa right in front of the cage. She's been so effective with applying that pressure immediately to Iowa's defense. We saw Penn State score on their first goal there with the takeaway right in the circle. And at that point, it was Jenna Christmer who put it away for the first goal of the game. And again, Penn State getting another corner opportunity. Again, up top, the missed trap there from Gephardt. Somehow she gets it to Brittany Griswack. There's a chance for Penn State in front of the net. Jenna Christmer for her second goal. Right place again, right time. If you take a look at the physical play from the attackers at the top of the circle, this should have been a free hit coming out for Iowa's defense. Look at Griswack when she tries to get a strike on it. She misses, her stick is flying. That is a call for the defense coming outside. If it's a play on situation for an advantage for Iowa, then that's the case there. But look at the physical play right there, knocking down Johansson and even obstructing her stick. We have a stoppage in play. So 
The umpire's actually ruling it not a goal, so they're taking it away. What did you see from well, that point? Well, per, when the officials are set up on the corner, you'll see the woman right there in the green, the official is at one location. The other official is more or less where this camera angle is coming green from. So they see absolutely. that view a little bit better. The officials may have met. We'll take another look at this. The shot from Grizwak, the second attempt. I mean, with Jenna Christmer in front. Perhaps the officials may have met after that goal happened with the other official seeing something else that the other official may not have seen. So that perhaps they could have discussed that, and they do have the ability to overturn the initial call. So it was once thought a two-goal lead here for Penn State, back down to one. So Iowa surviving a little bit of a scare there on that corner opportunity. We have a green card coming up here on Penn State. Nittany Lions will be playing down a player. Again, Iowa creating a corner chance. And Lakata, you could see her body language there. She did not like that call. So maybe a little bit of a momentum switch here in this game. Penn State at one point thought to go up here three to one, the goal taken away. And now Iowa with a chance here, a corner opportunity to perhaps tie this game here at two. Go! Again to the short side. Danny Hemion, the tip from Schulteis. And when you don't have a call go your way, some emotions may get out of order. You may start verbalizing some frustration to the official. If that's the case, the official does have an ability to issue a card to the team, and that what ha that's what has been done to Penn State. They've been issued a warning. If there is another infraction that happens from one player, then that player will be issued the card and sent off the field. And at this point, that's probably going to result in a yellow. Option pass to the... <laughs> That was Hemion with the shot on the left side. And Iowa just taking a long time to get their corner off and not really doing that at speed. And Penn State's defense, plenty of time to be able to read the play and come out with a good outlet ball. Under 18 minutes to play here in this game, a two to one Penn State advantage. Winner goes to Sunday's championship game. Again, wanna welcome you in here on this field hockey Friday morning slash afternoon. The first of two semifinal games. Our next one against Michigan State and Ohio State. You can catch that on tape delay, 1130 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. You know, the only issue that may come by with having a game this early in the morning. When they water the turf, depending on the temperature, and I've seen this happen a couple of times, that can freeze. So that that's an ice rink. <laughs> Sometimes if you arrive early in the morning in the Midwest, obviously there weren't any issues today, but there have been chances and opportunities for that turf to actually right, freeze. Is that a problem? Two, well, it delays the game a little bit. <laughs> When you need an offensive answer, who do you turn to? How about the sophomore, Natalie Caffone, leading the way for her team and getting her team to within one against the defending tournament champs. A handful of Hawkeye fans making the trip here to Columbus, Ohio, and willing their team maybe to a win. You see Tracy Grisbaum. And Lisa Salucci there on the left and Char Moret there on the right. This game at one point looked to have to be a two-goal lead there for Penn State. The goal was taken away from three to one down to two to one. And Iowa had a
plenty of a chance there before our break in that corner opportunity. And Natalie Cafone actually just issued a green card and will be sent off the field for two minutes to start out that play. What this signifies to everybody on the field and the sideline is that the referees are trying to maintain a more settled game. They're not going to allow anything to go, especially with a team warning being issued. There are three individual green cards issued. There's Natalie Cafone. Again, she'll be sitting out for two minutes. But three player green cards issued already here in this game, not including the one team. It's green the Big card. Ten tournament. <laughs> the umpires aren't messing around. It's a Big Ten tournament. I mean, this is really, you know, parts of the conference that make it unique. Under 16 minutes to play. Again, the stakes at hand here. A spot in the championship game here on Sunday. Penn State, the number one seed here of the Big Ten tournament, ranked sixth in the country against the 13th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. But Natalie Cafone actually issued a yellow card, which means she will be out five minutes. Not the, not the green card that we had initially I'm said. So Natalie Cafone issued a yellow which is actually a worse situation there for Iowa. She'll have to sit out five minutes. And Iowa playing down a player and playing down their best score. Natalie Cafone with the one goal here for the Hawkeyes this afternoon. Iowa substitution at number eight, Stephanie Norlander for number 21, Isabella. And Stephanie Norlander re-entering the game. Again, just moments ago, this was a game that looked to be a game that was a 3-1 advantage here for Penn State. The goal was taken away, and the score sits here at 2-1. We'll try and show you another look at that no-goal opportunity. Kara, again, what did you see? Well, you see Grizzwag trying to get a reverse hit on this and she misses and hits the stick of Carly Johansson, number 19. So she's basically obstructing Johansson from trying to make a good tackle on that. And the best view of that play was the opposite official that you do not see in that situation who actually had a better view of that whole play happening. And I think the phys physicality of Griswack and how she bodied up on her and basically decked Johansson out of the way, that's an obstruction. And so the score sits at two to one, instead of three to one, an advantage. Jenna Christmer credited a goal. Taylor Harold with a goal there for Penn State, and we mentioned Natalie Cafone with the goal. It reminds you that coming up next, women's soccer. The Big 10 championships going on there. Penn State against Iowa in that one as well. Couple of semifinal games there in soccer here today. Some men's basketball here later tonight. And of course, the tape delayed second semifinal of this field hockey championship coming up at 1130 Eastern. Look at the amount of Penn State defenders that they have cornered into this little section of the field. So they're always defensively ready and present and aware of what's going on. Iowa is not really being able to have some off ball moving or cutting. And I think that goes to show that this team is tired. Danny Hemion splitting the difference there between four Penn State players. And Iowa will take it here from the hash marks. Again, playing a player down with Natalie Cafone still sitting out. They shoot a yellow card. Serving it into the circle, the deflection. Norlander is there. And Iowa draws the corner chance. Stephanie Norlander, the freshman, making things happen. Norlander there battling with Katie Brenneman. And you'll see both Penn State captains are addressing the officials right now, asking for the reason I mean, of this call and why I was Marika able, Stribos. excuse me, a stroke, actually. Marika Stribos is one for one in penalty stroke opportunities, and she'll look to try to tie things up here in this game. See Gebhardt pleading her case with the umpire. So Marika Stribos up against Kylie Licata. Right side, and we're tied. 
Marika Stribos now two for two in penalty strokes this season. Her fifth goal of the game knots it up at two. It's a great thing when you have a member of your team, one of your more experienced players, to come up in a situation like that and execute on it. When it comes for postseason, you definitely want to have your strokers to the line. And the thing is, Lakata actually had that ball, but Stribo struck it with enough oomph and velocity that it was able to deflect in. Fifth goal this season. Here for one of the seniors on this Hawkeye team and doing it without their top scorer out. Natalie Cafone still sitting out with that yellow card. And Iowa has now tied things up. And Iowa has battled in the Big Ten all season long. You look at their conference record, two and four. Those four losses were by a difference of one goal. So this is a team that really battles it out to the last minute. Again, Denny Hemion, you said watch that matchup against Laura Gebhardt. And Penn State now with a corner opportunity. You see the corner differential, Penn State leading the way. Penn State jumped out real fast, but it's been evened up a little bit here in the second half. Again, this is a second half that Iowa thrives on. The short side, the chance there for Taylor Harrell, the ball trickling on the back line there on the goal line, and Iowa clears it out of harm's way. And Penn State also asking for another corner call. It almost looked like the ball deflected off the leg or foot of an Iowa defender. Pence, uh, excuse me, Iowa's defense also without Natalie Cafone at that fly position. So that's a big adjustment. Aubrey Coleman at the position. Katie Andrews will get things started. And there's Natalie Cafone back into the game. So 10 field players back out there there for the Hawkeyes. Cafone with the first goal there for Iowa. You just saw Marika Stribos with the penalty stroke to tie things up for the Hawks. Including today, Iowa has outscored opponents 39 to 12 in the second half of games this year. And look at their quarterfinal match against Michigan. That second half was what enabled Iowa to come away with a game winner. The Hawkeyes playing a little comeback here in this first semifinal game. Laura Gebhardt so dangerous dribbling into the circle, draws the whistle and the free hit, and the Hawkeyes had to play comeback. Down to nothing, getting a goal from their speedy scorester. That just made that up, Natalie Cafone. <laughs> Natalie Cafone finding the five hole also on Licato. Great success. This play resulting in a stroke for Marika Stribos, who converts on it a perfect two for two on the year in her stroke success, success rate. And again, another corner opportunity here coming up. The shots by the half there, you see Penn State dominating the first, Iowa controlling the second. Under 10 minutes to play. Abby Furman drawing the corner opportunity here for Penn State. Again, Whitney Reddick with an assist already this afternoon. She will insert for the Lions. Going up top, the stick stop, and Brittany Wiswak, and how about reaching to the sky with Kelsey Boyce? That is an extremely difficult shot to stop coming from Griswak at the top of the circle. And Boyce with a nice glove save over the top. Tracy. Chris Baum has said that Kelsey Boyce hasn't been tested a whole lot this season. She's been tested here. Watch Boyce. She almost has a consideration of actually going down on her pads in that. But if you see Griswack with her hand still apart on her stick coming through, and that's a great save by Boyce. That almost looked like it was going top shelf for Griswack. 
And we stayed locked here at twos. About eight minutes to go here in this game. Aubrey Coleman there for Iowa. Against Lauren Purvis. Katie Brenneman. And Penn State just very aware defensively. Wherever there is an Iowa attacker with the ball, there are about two or three Penn State defenders. So in those situations, you can't hear it, but there is a lot of communication in that tight of space, such as keeping the defender or the attacker to the outside, telling them which way to force, letting your defender in front of you know which shoulder you're off of. Hey, I'm off your left, I'm off your right. It takes a lot of coordination. Penn State has won the last five meetings here in this series. They are the defending Big Ten tournament champs and the reigning co-champs here in the regular season. Right now they are locked 2-2 here with Iowa, dumping it down there to Chrismer. The swing, the miss, and Ashton Klingler was there, a corner chance coming up. Penn State so quick on the transition, so fast up front. Well, this is an all, this is also an excellent ball fed up to Taylor Harold into space. It's important that when you're connecting with your forward line, look at Andrews be able to split that defense. Taylor Harold receives it on the run in space. So at that point, you already have a couple feet and space advantage on your defense. That's an excellent Penn State. Penn State averages nine for the season. They are now on their 10th corner opportunity here in this game. Whitney Reddick will insert. Going to the far side again, Brittany Griswack to Laura Gebhardt up top. Again, Kelsey Boyce all over it. A long hit here for Penn State as Iowa defends yet another corner opportunity. Cafone back in on that corner defense, breaks down her steps and gets a nice touch and deflection on that ball again. And when you have a duo such as Gebhardt and Griswack that can give and go and two quick, two touch passes inside the circle, that's something you really have to be able to contain. Kelsey Boyce now with seven saves here this afternoon. Penalty corner number 13, Brittany Wedding taking this is the 11th corner opportunity for Penn State. Back up to Brittany Griswack. Boyce is really coming up big inside that net. She's getting some nice touches, but when she's applying that save, she's deflecting it on the right angle. That's really hard to do as a goalkeeper because everything is happening in such a quick amount of time. In the instance where her stick is positioned on an angle so that when it deflects, it will actually go out over the end line. That's good stuff by Boyce. Boy, oh boy, Boyce. Her counterpart, Kylie Licata, had been named first team all Big Ten, but Kelsey Boyce, I'll tell you what, this afternoon has been putting up a first team all Big Ten performance. A red shirt senior is keeping her team in this game. Under five minutes to go. Penn State scored twice here in the first half. Iowa has responded here in the second. This is the first of two semifinal games here from Columbus, Ohio. There is one of the stars there for the Hawkeyes. Look at that, the seven saves here today for Kelsey Boyce. She might get another look there. Chris Murr with a chance, and that's wide right. Kelsey Boyce, a red shirt senior, had waited all opportunity to get a chance to play in the cage for the Hawkeyes, making the most of it today. And that is exactly the caliber of athlete she is. Talking with Tracy Grisbaum, she had the option to go to other schools and get substantial playing time. Boyce decided to stay at Iowa behind Murdy McGraw, and that also goes to show the commitment of this player and to be able to step into that role after a four-year starter such as Murdy McGraw and come up big in a post-tournament situation speaks volumes. She has played every single minute there for Iowa. And they redshirted her last year. Murdy McGraw was a senior there for Iowa. They redshirted her to give Kelsey Boyce this opportunity. 
up to Natalie Cafon. She has Stephanie Norlander number eight up high if she can find her. Coming up next, the Women's Soccer Championships in the semifinals. That game again, Penn State and Iowa. You see both semifinal matches here on the Big Ten Network. Lord Gebhardt trying to work that end line, serves it into the circle. She'll take it from the hash marks. Penn State, another corner chance. Gebhardt recognizing that she has about two or three Iowa defenders on her in that situation. You don't want to force a pass or a turnover when you're inside the circle of that. So what do you do? You maintain possession and you work for a corner. And that's exactly what Gebhardt was able to come up with. Reddick going short side to Taylor Harold, And that was one of the easiest saves that Kelsey Boy has had to make. And it's important that her defense has an ability to come around after she's made that initial stop and collect the ball and outlet it. Jesse Silfer, one of the freshmen for Iowa's corner defense, number 16, you'll see playing that right trail position. It's her responsibility to come around, collect the ball that Boyce has stopped, and outlet it. Penalty corners, a 13th chance here for Penn State. Up top to Brittany Griswack. Boyce again is there. And one more time, here we go. Penalty corner, Penn State. Boyce taking away a lot of space and area when she decides to lay down right outside of that goal line. A minute and a half to play. Up top, Griswack will take one more chance. And that shot just rocketed Danny Hemion. Here's a penalty sh stroke opportunity. Brittany Griswack tied at two. Left side, Penn State up. Well, it's been interesting, interesting to see a lot of the momentum of this game result from strokes and officials calling these situations. And when you have Brittany Griswack stepping up in that role, you can be sure that she's going to convert on that. Off of the corner, this ball is deflected and hits the body of Danny Hemion. And if that ball is stopped by a body of the defender, it results in a stroke. And therefore, Brittany Griswack steps up to the plate. And you know what? With the momentum that Boyce had going into that series of corners in the later part of this half, there was a pretty good chance that she had the ability to stop that. But again, Griswack converting on three of her four corner stroke attempts so far this season. That's a pretty good success rate. It is, three of four here this year. Her 11th goal this season. So now I was faced with a situation where you have one minute and 11 seconds left and you have to score fast. How do you score fast if you're Iowa? Natalie Cafone. I mean, you have to get the ball to her. She has an ability to carry that ball over 50, 60 yards and beating a couple defenders on the way. Cafone already with one of the one of the two goals here this this afternoon, Iowa recording the two goals to to knot it up. And now it's three to two thanks to the Brittany Griswack penalty stroke. If you're Penn State, what do you have to be aware of outside of Natalie Cafone? Uh, just taking away the passing lanes and lines to those forwards. We we have seen Iowa have success, and also Danny Hemion has actually been carrying the ball up into the offensive end pretty successfully. So if she has the ball, you have to make sure that you're applying a couple defenders on number 19. One minute remaining to play in right One minute remains to play in this first semifinal game. Penn State will take its time with a 16-yard hit. How much time are you allowed for this, a 16-yard hit? It's really up to the ref's discretion. I think both of these teams are extremely respectable and respectful of each other. 
Stephanie Lorlander trying to go end line, and Iowa will get one more chance here. 30 seconds to play. The Hawkeyes with one more, perhaps, corner opportunity. Maybe the last one here of the game. And how long can Penn State take here for their defensive corner unit? Well, at this point, with 10 seconds left on the clock, I was going to let this clock expire. But the corner will be carried out. So the final play here of regulation will end here on a corner chance. When you're ready. Go. Hemion will get the chance. The deflection it in, and we're tied. We're headed to overtime. Well, Iowa has been a team all season that can perform in the second second half, and I think it speaks huge that they're able to convert on a corner like that when they haven't had that many reps throughout the game. Danny Hemion mistrapped it. She actually mistouched it at the top of the circle, allowing Penn State's defense to stay in that play. And Ashlyn Klinger overran the ball, that giving Hemion a chance to put it on her reverse and place a shot on net. Notice the difference, notice the difference in defense on the fly position coming from Cafone and coming from Ashton Klingler. That separates the success that you can have. Danny Hemion with their 13th goal this season. We're not done playing field hockey in this first semifinal. We got a little extra coming up. Tied here at three at the start of the overtime between the two nationally ranked teams. Let's have them play a little extra field hockey. Here's what your overtime rules are. It's seven v seven, not 11 v 11, two 15 minute overtimes. The first goal wins, and if we're still tied, we go to a shootout after two overtime sessions. This is how we got to this point, a very exciting finish here between these two teams, and this is the final goal, the final play of the regular regulation. And basically your last chance of your Iowa to get something on, Ashton Klinger overcommits on that corner defense. Hemion having time, kind of mistraps it here, gets it on the inside, reads Ashton Klinger over committing to it and just places a good strike on it. With time expired, you have to perform, you have to step up, and you have to result in something. I think that's huge for Iowa to come away with that. Here you see your overtime records there. Iowa has not yet won an extra session here this season. 0 for 1 in its chance, and Penn State 1 for 2. We had talked about before this game began that Iowa's Big Ten record two and four here in the conference season and all four losses have been decided by one goal. And the thing that's you know striking about that is losses. I mean this is a team that has an ability on that right on that straddling that line to come through with this and it d this does not look like a team that can come away with four loss losses in conference. So what do you tell, if you're Tracy Grisbaum, what do you tell this team to get over that hump and close out a close game? Well I think at this point, this is really an advantage for Penn State just because of fatigue. Iowa, you have to move the ball. Natalie Cafone is going to keep going and going and going and going, and you have to limit Penn State's corners. You see, these two teams are nationally ranked. Penn State is ranked the highest. Northwestern there at 13, Michigan at 18. Iowa sitting there at 20th. Natalie Cafone, one of the goal scorers here for this afternoon. Marika Stribos with a penalty stroke. Danny Hemion with the game tying goal to send it into overtime. Those are your goal scorers there for Iowa. So seven v seven here in this overtime session. And again, what do you have to remind yourself when you only have six field players out there? You have to let the ball do the work, and this is, you know, when Penn State travels in numbers and has those quick passing combos, it becomes all the more exaggerated because of the space that they have when you only have six field players. 
And this is where your summer conditioning comes into play. These are the exact moments that you're thinking of when you are out in August in 90 degree hit, heat doing interval training. <laughs> this is the stuff that you think about. That and perhaps whatever playlist you might have on your iPad. <laughs> Here we are in November morning, heading into the afternoon, the first of two semifinals. What's at stake? How about a spot in Sunday's championship game? Gebhardt controlling, and there is Natalie Cafone and Gebhardt battling a free hit and a quick self-start for Iowa. Danny Hemion dropping it off to the freshman, Stephanie Norlander, oh, and Cafone was there. And these, this duo, I think, has been working well, particularly toward the end part of this season. Cafone assisted Norlander on the game winner yesterday. It'd be nice to, you know, give it back a little bit. Natalie Cafone right there, right place, right time. What a great ball by Norlander. Again, Cafone, this time to Norlander, and she can't put it away. Cafone, Norlander, Norlander, Cafone. Stephanie Norlander, the freshman of the year, the Big Ten freshman of the year, been kind of quiet here in this game. Trying to make some noise here in the overtime session. And also just with the way that Iowa was able to tie this game, they have a little zest to them entering this overtime, carrying that momentum and excitement and confidence as you entered this first overtime stanza. This Penn State team has proven to be vulnerable, lost the last game of the regular season against Michigan. Again, into the circle there, Iowa with the chance and the opportunity, and Lakata with a kit save. Well, you know what, it's interesting because I think Lakata perhaps may have learned from that corner that Iowa scored on with Hemion going on the reverse. So Lakata was in a great situation to react differently that time. A quick restart again for Iowa. Norlander trying to keep it in the circle. And Penn State will look to clear. We talk about boys coming up big, but how about Lakata in overtime? Lakata making a split save in a split second. Getting a great save on that, but also her defense having the ability to collect the ball. As soon as she saves that, you see Grizzwack, and that's also where Grizzwack is effective in the circle. She outlets it extremely quickly. Here we go, Cafone again at speed right at Brittany Grizzwack against the Glacata who comes out. Cafone there, Iowa wins! Natalie Cafone with her second goal of this game, and look at the emotion there. The redshirt junior Kylie Licata, and Cafone is the hero. Her 21st goal this season, the sixth game winner of the year, and her 50th point leading the Big Ten. And Penn State is stunned. Well, Iowa just having a lot of ability to generate some offense. And look again, Cafone breaking the double team. This is a great play by Lakata. Actually came out and saved it, but deflected off of one of her defenders. Cafone gathers it in a short amount of time. She was able to get it on her reverse and get some lift on it. That's hard to do in a small space with not a lot of room to move. You see her pull it to the left of her and then get a little lift on it. She recognizes that Grizzwack is actually on the ground and having the awareness to get air under the ball. So Iowa takes down the defending Big Ten tournament champs and they had to do it coming down by two goals from the first half. Natalie Cafone, one of the best scorers here in the Big Ten this season. A first team all Big Ten honoree. Comes up with two of Iowa's four goals here this afternoon and Iowa advances into the championship game.
Take another look. Ricotta comes out, makes a great save. Cafone, hero of the day. Top shelf, right place, right time. 